Welcome to Chip's Money Tips. I'm Chip Chinnery and this is Mother May I Avoid Probate 3, The Search for Spock. As I mentioned in parts one and two, your cash, stocks, retirement accounts can all avoid probate for free. But what does not elude probate's grasp so easily is your real estate, unless you have a revocable living trust. Also pronounced revocable, which is completely acceptable, especially if your attorney's James Mason, who is wearing a padded wig. Revocable! Either way you say it. If you own a house, you should probably get one. You can hire an attorney to set one up for you, or you can go through one of those online legal services like LegalZoom.com and do it yourself for a lot less money. Now, if you're watching this at ChipsMoneyTips.com, there should be an ad right underneath this video for either an attorney or an online legal service or both. And if you click on those ads and go through them and use their service, daddy gets a little bit of this. Generally speaking, when you punch out, the state counts up how much cash, stocks, real estate, and stuff you have. If it's under a certain limit, you're good. If it's over that limit, your estate has to go through probate. Now, if you're watching this at chipsmoneytips.com, right underneath this video will be a link that can take you to a site that'll tell you exactly what your state's limit is. In California, the limit is $100,000. And I don't know if you've heard, but property is pretty expensive out here. And the state doesn't just count how much you put down on your house or condo, they count the full appraised value of your property. So even if you owe money on your property, the full value is subject to probate fees. And how much are those pesky little fees, you say? 4% on the first 100,000, 3% on the next 100,000, 2% on the next 800,000, and 1% on the next 9 million. The peskiness adds up. Unless, of course, you have a revocable living trust, revocable, which is pesky proof and completely avoids probate. Let's use the example from part one in which Joe Blow died with $225,000 in cash and stocks. Let's also assume he bought a house for $500,000 with a $100,000 down payment a month before he died in a freak boat accident. That was no boat accident. Therefore, Joe's estate would have probate fees of $17,500, despite owing $400,000 on his house. Even if he had put his cash and stocks in POD and TOD accounts, as I mentioned in Mother May I Avoid Probate 2, Electric Boogaloo, he would have had to pay $13,000 in probate fees on the real estate alone. Now that is money that otherwise would have gone to his heirs. So, which would have been the best deal for the Blow family? A. Do nothing spend $17,500 in probate fees. B, use PODs and TODs, spend $13,000 in probate fees. C, have an attorney draw up a revocable living trust, spend $1,000 to $5,000 and pay no probate fees. Or D, use an online place like LegalZoom.com to draw up the trust, spend $249 and pay no probate fees. The correct answer is C or D. That's right, if Joe Blow had set up a revocable living trust, he would have saved his heirs $17,500 in probate fees. Here's a very important bonus tip. If you own property outside the state, when you die, all of that out-of-state property must go through probate in each state. But all that can be avoided with your revocable living trust. If you like having tea. If you're watching this at chipsmoneytips.com, there are links underneath this video that can take you to information that will support what I'm saying here. So, if you own a house, you probably should get a revocable living trust. Otherwise, at the very least, everyone should do the free option of having all of your bank accounts and stocks held as payable on death or transfer on death. And make sure there are beneficiaries named on all your retirement accounts. That way, all those assets avoid probate fees. Your heirs will thank you for it and you'll look pretty smart from the grave.